All right, well, I've come to, uh, I'll tell you who I am, I think I introduced myself the other day. My name is Joshua Ziefel. I'm the professor of youth ministries at Northwest University, right up there in Kirkland. Some of you, yeah, you know Northwest? Some of you, yeah. I see a lot of Northwesty people. I don't know why, I don't know why people who went to Northwest and I class with me are here, because you've heard this already, right? But, you know, they just, whatever. Uh, so, um, in that role, as I mentioned the other day, I also oversee uh, the children's ministry program. But let me tell you, um, uh, Dan Mateer and Brent Colby are our rock star children's ministry professors. I don't actually teach a children's ministry class proper. We have, um, to call them adjuncts is even to be a little, I don't know, almost seems insulting because they're more than adjuncts. They, they help me or run the program there. So we're very excited to be working with them. Um, and uh, one of the other things that I do is there are a few classes that we have that I sort of, we sort of bring together our youth and children's ministry uh, majors in one class because some of the mechanics of uh, ministry at some different levels work well. And also some of the things like transition periods and being able to understand um, developmental aspects and transition in ministry is important for, for, both, uh, for both types of ministers. And so Brent asked me to talk a little bit about this transition period between uh, children's ministry uh, and youth ministry, which um, can be a little bit of a dicey one. And I know you know that better than me because you're doing that all the time probably. Um, I come to this, I'll admit, from, from a youth pastor's point of view. I don't have, I was never a children's pastor. You know, I've done some children's ministry in my, my local church. I would, I've been involved a little bit here and there. Um, but let me tell you, I don't even have any children right now. So uh, I, I, really, I really sort of outside the box there. So I'm really coming to this um, as a youth minister. Um, but I think that'll be an important, hopefully, perspective for you to see, uh, because I know that you're coming to this as children's ministers, most of you. Most of you. Uh, a few quotations that I found uh, that I thought were really interesting, and I don't know these people, but I was, I was doing some searching, and I, and I thought this was maybe illustrative of some, of the, some of the difficulties that we may face when we talk about students in transition, probably that fourth, fifth, sixth, to seventh grade area. Um, Jason Curry, a youth pastor, says this, Half of them, high school seniors, that is, couldn't remember anything about sixth grade, and the other half had horrible memories of an awkward stage of life. Maybe you're having some post-traumatic stress right now as you think about that. Uh, someone who's particularly focused, uh, Joe Puentes, on ministry to preteens says this, preteens are physically, intellectually, and emotionally different than lower elementary kids and junior high kids. What's more is that preteens seem to be in a unique spiritual situation than the other age groups. Preteens are in transition spiritually. As a whole, they're no longer satisfied with just the basics of the Christian faith. Um, and I want to walk through a couple of different areas and, and, and to focus on as we think about this today. And perhaps we'll have some time for questions at the end. What time am I supposed to be done? Oh, it's on here, isn't it? The next session starts at 10.30, so I don't know if I need to be done by then. All right, we'll say 10.15-ish, right? Um, first of all, a few words about psychosocial development. You know, one of the things I do in a class we teach called Discipleship and Spiritual Formation in Northwest, for, yeah, yeah, we have some veterans here, um, for all of our ministry students thinking about discipleship, is one of the things we do, in addition to looking, we begin with looking at biblical foundations and the history of Christian discipleship. We look at techniques of discipleship, the fact that it's God doing their work as a, in us as much as we're, you know, growing closer to God. We look at things like um, psychological development in individuals. Because there are certain ways, and you know this as children's ministers, I think, better than anyone else. There are certain ways that uh, people at a certain age, especially children, cannot understand certain things in certain ways, but just a few years later, they're able to comprehend things. You know, so you have a child, you tell them Jesus is, a, Jesus is your rock, and they literally think maybe Jesus is a stone, right? You know, that's not something that someone even a few years older would consider. So you see this very well. Sometimes for um, other ministry students at, the, at Northwest, this seems like a hard sell to them. They say, well, isn't faith the same? Well, faith in Jesus is the same, but the way we understand that is the way that our brains develop can change vastly over time. And when we're dealing with this transition period, again, probably from around, from the ages of 10 through 13, I don't need to tell you that the drastic changes that happen in a young person from age 10 to 13 or 14 are more drastic than probably any other time of their life. And it's tricky because that's the time, generally, they're phasing out of children's ministry and phasing into youth ministry. Um, what we see, and these numbers keep going down for whatever reason, you can blame the hormones and chicken or whatever, or society, who knows, but um, 
No labeling, I guess. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> my wife is a big fan of that one. Uh, we see the onset of puberty for girls um, from around 10 to 14, so right during this period, and sometimes this is even younger. I mean, there have been, you know, drastic, you know, headline, not headline, but news, news article stories, you know, certainly as well as six, seven uh, places like this as well. For boys, it's a little older, 12 to 16, though certainly that can tackle a little younger as well. Um, and of course, we know that with puberty, significant bodily changes come, and suddenly, you know, we're used to interacting uh, in the children's ministry area with, with kids, and suddenly they're not kids anymore. Um, but, the, but their age, their grade is not such that they're allowed in our church to go into the youth ministry yet. And so there's these, 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 these massive changes that are taking place. And they're happening unevenly, too. It's not like all of your girls, right, um, enter this phase at the same time, or all of you guys. And so it's a, that contributes to some of the awkwardness we're dealing with here. Um, it's during this period as well that we're seeing the emergence of uh, peer orientation. And you can see this as well in your groups, and you see this you know, if you take a, you know, a room full of third graders and a room full of uh, seventh graders, you can see clearly um, the, the beginning of an orientation of a person towards uh, peer group affiliation. Um, some of this, you know, is, people that study this say some of this is just natural as students are trying to enter into adolescence and try to find identity and where they belong <laughs> and things like this. But we know as well that um, a significant... Um, a significant amount of peer experience, especially at this transitional age, um, can be very hurtful. Uh, it can very, be very destructive as much as teens are looking for it to be constructive. If you take a look at the second page here, um, one of the books, and it's a little older now, but that I utilize in, and I'd recommend you taking a look at, it's a little controversial, but I think some of the things he says are right on, on the nose. Um, a book by James Fowler called Stages of Faith. And you, it may be that all you need is this chart here, which is, you know, I bought for $1.95 online, right? Um, and he basically um, is a uh, kind of a theologian, but also kind of a psychologist. And this book's about 30 years old now, so it's by no means new. You can buy it on Amazon for like 50 cents, probably. Um, he basically uh, did some studies of people as they grew throughout their life stages and the, and the way that he would describe their faith, both in the way that they could begin to process through cognition and spiritual experience and thinking through their faith, and then also the effects that might have on them. And so I kind of wrote, I hand wrote in some numbers here, but he says, you know, we start off in, at, in, from, well, before age two, he calls it undifferentiated faith. We can hardly think, I mean, we, we hardly think much about anything at that point, or have, the, or have memory, or, you know, we're just learning that we're, we just, we just learned that the universe exists outside of us before age two, you know, and then, but once we move into age, from age two to about six, seven, we enter into what he calls an intuitive projective phase. Um, for preschool children, fantasy and reality often get mixed together, and, and you know, and you've seen this. My wife works at a Montessori preschool, and the other day, she, they, were, they were playing, I don't know, dinosaurs or something, you know. And one of the kids was, and they're this age, was running after some of the other kids and says, I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And she said, literally, one of the children ran to her most terrified of <laughs> I guess he, li you know, he literally began to think a Tyrannosaurus Rex was running after him. <laughs> These sort of lines between you know, uh, fantasy and reality get mixed together or, or blurred. Uh, but it's during this stage at the same time, and you know this, uh, that our most basic ideas about God are usually picked up from our parents or our society or our churches. And so what you do right there is foundational. You know, I don't know if Fowler would agree with me, but I tend to think that some of the ways we think about heaven, hell, sin, God, get locked in sometimes at this phase. Still, right to this day, when I think about God, I have to resist the urge to imagine King Friday the 13th from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> I don't know why, you know. And when we think of hell, we still often tend to think of pitchforks and, you know, you know red devils and things like this, you know. Although, strictly speaking, this is sort of, if anything, a kind of medieval invention that was cartoonized, and you remember the Tom and Jerry cartoons, you know, angels, harps, and all these kind of things. Um, so, you know, and we know some of this. As we move past that stage, and the brain is developing a bit more, um, we move into what's called the mythic literal stage. These are just categories that you placed on it. Um, children become school age, they're in kindergarten, first grade, etc., uh, they start understanding the world in more logical ways. Again, they're able to do this now. Um, not that, that line between fantasy and reality is, is a little clearer for them. Um, and they generally come to accept the stories told to them by their faith community, but tend to understand them sometimes in very literal ways. Um, and, you know, 
there's not a lot of abstract thinking at this point, you know. Uh, it's it's just sort of straight up how it is, you know, and and there we are. And these are actually the children you're working with mostly, and you can certainly take a deeper look at this in Fowler or whatnot. One of Fowler's other projects is saying that sometimes people uh, don't actually move past, out of the phases that they should move out of at a certain age. So he actually says some people never leave this mythic literal phase, and they sort of remain in, in, in faith development, sort of at that <laughs> level in the way they understand the world and God. But well, we won't go into that today. But really, what we're talking about today, just I, I went through those, is because the, the students we're talking about today, the children we're talking about today, are those who are sort of caught between phase two and three. And three is what's called synthetic conventional. This is the adolescent stage of faith. Roughly speaking, we're looking at ages 12 through 18 here, but because adolescence tends to begin socially and sometimes biologically earlier, this may tack earlier, and because adolescence is super extended in our world today, this could go as high as 30 or, or, or beyond. You know, by some measures, maybe I myself, when I'm 33, have only recently left adolescence in our, in our phase. In Northwest, it's a little earlier because people get married when they're like 17, but um, <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. Um, as Fowler says, most people on, uh, move on to this stage as teenagers. At this point, their life has grown to include several different social circles, and there's a need to sort of orient their life or put it all together. Like, what's, what's a way that I can make sense of everything that's going on around me? And so they do this by um, usually adopting some sort of all-encompassing belief system. Um, and they do this volitionally, but they also are looking for a way to explain their world. Um, but what's interesting, though, at this stage, at the adolescent stage, they're still not um, completely always, as we say, making their faith their own. They're sort of tend they often will tend to adopt the, the faith or the understanding of the world of whatever their peer group is, be that peer group be the church or their peer group in school or whatnot. So it's still very peer-oriented and not still as, as reflective as it might be in a later stage of faith. And as he goes on, he talks about how later on, sometimes when we leave home, maybe go off to college or have experiences, we'll begin to maybe reject some aspects of what we just uncritically accepted, you know, earlier in life and begin to sort of make our faith our own or, or decide about this or whatnot. So um, I just say that to tell you that you sort of, we're dealing with this sort of in-between the mythic, literal, and synthetic conventional phase here in this mode as Fowler would talk about it. 